So right now, Justin is unwrapping the blades for this uh, GA200L from Whirlwind. It's a ground adjustable propeller. We're gonna start by just doing the inventory, make sure we have all the parts that we need to do the job today. You know what's awesome about new propellers? Blades! <laughs> we use the pitch paddle to set the blade angle. How do you put these blades on an airplane? With a propeller hub. All right, we need to have two short bolts and four long bolts. And we need six wedge locks. The tricky thing about the wedge locks are they can actually split in two. So one, when I say one wedge lock, I'm talking about the pair, when they're either glued together or they've broken apart. Why do they split in two? Because they're lock washers. Very nice. <laughs> Last on the list is four hub clamping bolts and they're Nord lock washers. Today we'll be talking about the RV 13 inch spinner. That's made up of the spinner dome itself and then a forward and aft bulkhead. So to recap the parts list, we got our two propeller blades, our blade setting angle uh, paddle, the six bolts that hold the propeller assembly onto the crankshaft, the four bolts that clamp the two halves of the, of the uh, hub together, and these are their associated uh, lock washers, and then the spinner that's associated with the air specific airplane. Hmm, what do we do next? All right, so we, here we have the spacer for our Lycoming engine. We see it's a two and a quarter inch spacer. That's the distance from the crankshaft forward. You can see there's a whole bunch of bolts going on on the front of the airplane here. Uh, s these six are actually what holds the spacer to the crankshaft. We're not gonna talk about those right now. Instead, we're talking about these six, right, where it's just a hole. And the big difference here is the drive lugs where they actually sit proud off of the spacer and then these flush ones. And the most important detail there is that these flush ones are actually the ones that are gonna sit underneath the blade. My thumbs are off. I must have grown thumbs, because that's an inch and a half, calibrated. Dang it. So it's flush here, so that's gonna line up with the hole for the blade on the side here. So this goes there, and we slide it in now. Uh, so the detail here to look out for is we're trying to make sure we have enough space between the forward face of the aft bulkhead and the end of the lug here. So what we're looking for is 200 thou. I'm gonna use my fancy micrometer here to measure it. All right, so now we're gonna install the back side of the uh, propeller hub. The big point here is to make sure that the drive lugs, which are where the propeller isn't, line up. So these ones are the flush ones. We put those where the propeller's gonna go. The two short prop bolts go in the holes that are underneath the propeller sections. Make sure we put some Loctite thread locker on it. These are uh, not able to be safety wired since they're underneath the propeller, hence the Loctite. Also note, we have our split washers on there. All right, so the trick here is we don't have anything to get leverage with to put the torque on these bolts. So this is a cool trick that uh, I invented. I take full credit for this whole trick. Anyway, hey, so I taught that to you. <laughs> This is just a simple piece of wood, and that allows us to put the counter torque on. It's always important to uh, torque to the proper spec for the bolt that you're using. So now we're going to install the blades and the front of the hub. We have three bolts pre-installed here. The important thing on all the bolts is to make sure they have a wedge lock washer. So what we've done so far is run these bolts down just to the finger tight, the intent being that the forward half of the hub is on there uh, relatively straight, you know, the gap between top and bottom, and that you can rotate blades, uh, change the pitch of the blades in a fine manner. You know? And then from there, we want to take reference of the, the angle of this front face of the hub. So you got a protractor, any, uh, any digital angle reading device will work. Um, so you lay it on there, wait for it to stabilize, and hit the zero button. Now when it comes to digital protractors, the type doesn't matter. Uh, this one is kind of a fancy one. Uh, this one, Pittsburgh brand Harbor Freight. All that really matters is that you can read to the one-tenth of a degree. You can also use an iPhone app. Uh, I don't know what this one's called, but random iPhone app shows tenths of a degree. Now we're gonna take our inclinometer, we're gonna put it on our blade paddle, we're gonna slide it down the blade. The trick here is to try to make the blade paddle just about level vertically. It's not totally critical that it's perfect. 26 and 26.0, about there, that's what we want. We think pretty close. Now we're gonna reach in and we're gonna make sure we put just a little bit of tension on these outboard bolts, the furthest bolts out, just to kind of hold it. Then we're gonna pull the airplane through. I'm gonna pull through backwards so the mags don't fire. It's very important that you make sure that the mags are off. This is dangerous. 
set our 26. Justin didn't do quite as good of a job on this side. Brilliant. Put a little tension on these middle bolts. You may use, need to use a wrench, whatever, just to stabilize it. And I like to do that a couple times. Just make sure that you keep getting the same number, the goal for the day, whatever the airplane uh, uh, pitch angle that you're planning to run. Elliot got our blades angle set nicely. The next step is to torque the, the top of the hub here down onto the blades, locking them into position. Uh, you'll notice that there are two different bolt sizes going on here. Um, so make sure you're set that you got your torque wrench set to the proper torque setting for each size bolt. Uh, and we're going to start with the four inner bolts on this pattern here. Now as we go, we want to make sure that we take the, the top of the hub down level to the bottom hub. If you don't want to load up the top two and then you're going to pull the top of the, the clamp up, you know, possibly changing the blade angle, loading up on the surfaces weirdly, a uh, bad idea. So. Uh, what I like to do is use the standard star pattern that I learned when I was changing tires on my VW Bug in high school um, and do basically an eighth of a turn at a time. Yep. So we got all, all the bolts torqued down here uh, and when you're done, before moving on, go back and remeasure uh, the two propellers, make sure they're within two tenths of a degree from each other. So, Cool, let's remeasure it. All right, so we've uh, torqued all the bolts, and now it's time to install the forward bulkhead. These are just A and three bolts, and then we have spacers here, uh, which you may need to use to set the forward bulkhead distance from the aft bulkhead to make the spinner fit right. Since these bolts are only holding on, the forward bulkhead torque isn't critical, though I would recommend safety wire. All right, so then we just installed the, uh, the spinner. These uh, adjustments that we're doing are dependent on the tachometer that you're using to do those measurements. So you want to make sure that you've calibrated your tachometer recently by a trained professional. So today we set the blade angle on this whirlwind propeller at 26 degrees, which is just a, a rough guess that works for most RVs. So the next step is you got to go out and fly it. Before you fly it, you'll do a full RPM static run-up and just get a rough idea and see if you're close. You're looking for between 21 and 2200 RPM to know that you're close. Then you go and fly. If you find that in order to stay below the manufacturer's red line of 2700 RPM, most likely, you have to throttle the airplane back, then you land and add some more pitch. Or vice versa. If you find that at full power you're running 2650 or 2600 RPM, then you'll land and take some pitch out. A good rule of thumb when you're readjusting the propeller is for every degree of pitch change of the propeller, you lose about 100 RPM. So after you've been operating the propeller for about three hours, you want to make sure you go ahead and pull the spinner off and check the torque on all the bolts on them. Uh, it's not uncommon for that whole system to compress during those first three hours and you actually lose some of that torque value on the bolts. Which is a reminder, do not paint the aft bulkhead of the spinner. That paint ends up over time compressing and you lose the torque on the bolts. So when it comes to pre-flight inspections, annual inspections, and 50-hour inspections, refer to the owner's manual which will give you direction on how to do this.